Can I answer them if I can? Are these the same sturgeons that are in the Great Lakes? No, these are different species, completely different species. The ones in the Great Lakes or in other big lakes, are, uh, they're not anadromous. They just sort of hang out. Sometimes they'll move down to rivers that fill the lakes, but they're not quite the same thing. But they, they are also bigger than the ones we have, larger. Are there any <coughs> projections on what the population was 50 years ago? Um, they've done some of that stuff in Florida where they have a pretty healthy population in Swanee River and in Chakahatchee area. <coughs> And it was quite a bit larger. There was a lot of fishing for them. These are, this species went on the endangered species list in 1991. Uh, and there was fishing for them. Yeah. The one record they have from uh, the Mississippi River, which we think they're extirpated from that system now, or they're very rare, uh, was, how, what was that, like 12 feet long? That picture from the museum? It was amazingly huge compared to anything anyone has seen here. And in Florida, the biggest one they've got is probably about two and a half meters. So, you know, it's a, it's a big, but there, they, there's more of them there and the bigger. Estimates in Swanee are about 5,000 individuals. In ours, is about 280 pre Katrina. That's the only time it's ever been done. So, and I just follow your work with Spike Tour. Are there any that you know of that live in like Middle Bay, Newport, 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 we're pretty sure they're there. We're pretty sure there are a lot more places than we can find, but they're really hard to find. They can spend, my, my team goes out and they'll spend two to four days a week, 10 hours, 12 hours a day, and come back skunk every day. You know, it's hard to keep even young people motivated to go back out and do it when you just not get much. But when you get one, it's like, Katie barred the door. It's great. You know, it, it, but in Florida, they can get 20 fish in two hours. If the water's clear, they can see them. They just throw the nets on them and they pretty much jump in the boat. But uh, uh, there's no question they're probably up in other areas that we just haven't had the, the financial uh, capability of, of sampling. Is it always hard to make the bay has such a big estuary for... But see, the thing is, Weeks Bay has no river. Weeks Bay is a marine-dominated sort of estuary, so there's no place for it to migrate to a spawn. I mean, we have records of them moving east over our fish moving towards Dauphin Island. So we know they do that. So the chances of small ones going in there is highly likely. But we just don't know because we don't have the equipment there to see if they come by. Well, I guess the farthest they could go up, if they went up to Trevor, it would be somewhere around there, right? or around there. Yeah, they can go to Mobile Bay, no question. But, but, but we, well, I think of Weeks Bay. I think of the, uh, uh, you said Weeks Bay. I'm thinking Grand Bay. Uh, Weeks Bay, I don't know. I, mean, I, have, I have no indication they're in Weeks Bay at all. But, but we, we pretty much are sure that they're in Mobile Bay moving up towards the, uh, the rivers. You know, to spawn, but no one's really had time or money in Alabama to study that. It, it, it takes a bunch of money to do this. It's not, it's not, uh, uh, it's equipment heavy and people heavy, you know, in terms of funding. So, I think I'm done. The missive. Oh. The missive. You, you have all those stations at Ship Island there because you know they're going to fill in there, or is that just a coincidence? No, we know you're going to fill in there. I, mean, I know, but you didn't, did you schedule those? or select those sites because you knew they were going to build Yes. Yeah. We specifically sat down with their people, and in matter of fact, I'm meeting with them Wednesday. Uh, there's a whole other group doing all the benthic work and all the sediment work, and, and they sp we specifically sort of got that approved, and also based on the work that Steve Ross and, and folks had done in the past. You know, we know where they spent time, uh, but it was, again, one of those, they can't be everywhere. You know, if you do it manually, you can't be everywhere. And if you found that they were heavily using that, would it affect that project? Uh, th that's above me. I'm doing the science. I don't decide what to do with the management aspect of it. I assumed it would have some impact, you know, but I don't think it will stop it. I think it's going to happen. It's just a matter of can they use that? Can NOAA or Fish and Wildlife get them to mitigate somewhere else, whether it's creating habitat, funding other projects to see what it's, we don't really know, but that's really above what we do. We just provide the information and, and let the, the managers and the folks deal with that. Those fish that go up and don't feed in, up in the rivers, they lose a lot of weight during yeah. that six month period? Exactly. And one of the things Paul's doing post doc is, is we're going to be doing body morphometrics on fish we get on the islands, uh, or they were first coming in and we catch at the mouth, uh, and then get those after they've been up there six months and look at the real differential body shapes. Because you can, you can look at them and tell that they're you know, very different. And we're going to do some multi dimensional sort of modeling of that and then try to figure that out. It's a very cool thing that Paul's going to come up with. And uh, um, and we're hoping to find some money to continue that kind of work, you know. And 
it's still early on that. But 